Hey everybody, welcome to The Carvin Tent. Today I'm going to show you how to carve a morel mushroom. Really simple, really easy carve. This here is what we're looking at. Boom. That's the mushroom. I'm going to show you guys how to carve. I'll show you what you need and I'll show you how to do it. So stick around. Got my helmet cam on here. Here's uh, the items that we're gonna need for this carving. You should have gloves, dust mask, something to protect your face, your chaps, steel toe boots, all right? Um, tool wise, you're gonna need a chainsaw. Now you could do this whole carving with just a dime tip bar on your small saw, or you can do it with a small saw like this 193 with the stock bar, and then you'll need the dime tip bar for the detail work. Um, we'll also need some kind of stiff bristle brush. You can use an angle grinder with a disc or a drill with a flap sander. So the choice is yours. Either one of those will work. You'll also need a torch. Either one of these will work. I'll be using my, uh, my turbo torch here. You guys will get to see that in just a second. But if this is all you've got, this will get the job done. Turning around here looking. You're also gonna need the jaw horse. The jaw horse is gonna hold our work piece steady for us so we don't have it flying all over. This is the mushroom we're gonna carve. This is a morel mushroom. Um, it's a really simple, really easy carve. Um, you can sell these things for you know just a few bucks. They're, they're definitely not something that's gonna break the bank on anybody. But if you guys have seen my uh, gnome carving videos, what better to go with a gnome than some mushrooms? So, also, if you guys want to learn how to carve the gnomes, I'll leave a link up here on top of the screen somewhere, and it'll take you to my Patreon account. Right there, I have a full tutorial on how to carve a gnome step by step. Go there, check it out. All right, so we're going to just carve this out of a pine limb. It's about four inch girth, I'd say, and that's, that's it. It's just one limb. Uh, you could probably do it out of a piece of scrap if you want from another carving. That would work just fine. So the first thing we want to do is get this in the vise, jaw horse, clamp it down, and because mine's a little long, I'm going to make two quick cuts here and uh, trim it to length. Now I'm keeping these right around a foot long, or tall if you will. It, it doesn't really matter, you can make yours taller, shorter, that's, you know, that's up to you. So. Right now though, we're gonna cut, I'm gonna cut mine to length and then we'll uh, get carving. All right guys, that was easy enough. Let's move these pieces out of the way. Make sure your workspace is clear, free of debris so you guys can walk around this safely. I want you to take your carving a nice straight cut make that your bottom get it in your vise now I'm gonna have only about an inch of the carving in the vise itself clamp it down tight lock it all right so like I said I'm gonna be using my 193 to block it out in the detail bar just for some little cuts after so the first thing we're gonna to want to do is take the saw and make these angled cuts down kind of like a swooping motion as you can see this is kind of a cone shape so that's what we got to do we got to turn the top of this into a cone um, we're not gonna have the bark on when we're all done so if you have a limb with no bark that's really not a problem just you know you're gonna cut it off anyway all right so let's start these cuts Right, so that's what you should be looking at right now kind of a cone shape the point is to kind of round it so we're making just little cuts as you go around to give it that rounded cone shape 
Now, the next thing I want you to do is we're going to cut in just above your jaw horse. So, this is going to take a steady hand. Don't hit your jaw horse. You're going to dull your chain, potentially get hurt. Just pay attention. Use this and work your way all the way around. We're going to be plunging in only a little bit. I mean, maybe the, uh, the width of the chain is all that's going to go in. It's going to go enough probably just to go through the bark and just into the wood. Just, just a little. So, does everybody see why it's important to have a clear workspace? We're walking around a lot, we're moving a lot. You don't want to trip and fall with this bar running, cut yourself wide open. So the next step, we're going to make some straight lines down to the line we just cut. We're going to work our way all the way around, trying to keep this in a, a circular shape. So cutting down, work your way right around, kind of like we just did. <clears throat> Alright guys, so it's pretty quick so far, right? You got this thing that probably looks like a, a rocket with no fins at the moment. Perfect. So, as you see, this cut's coming down kind of angled in slightly. As you remember, the carving rounds in just a little bit. So, we're kind of just getting that cut out of the way right off the bat. The next thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall we want our top to be. Now, looking at the one... I already did you know this one is taller than that so it does change it a little but it's still the same mechanics I'm gonna figure out how tall we want that top so you know mine's gonna come down about five inches or so so we're gonna do another line in kind of like we did here this time angle in just a little bit and work your way all the way around kind of like that if you can see the bar we're gonna walk our way all the way around staying safe all right If you guys notice, I don't just leave the saw in and walk, walk, walk. What I want you guys to do is make a cut, stop. Make a cut, stop. You know what I mean? That way there, you have less risk of tripping and falling. Next thing we got to do is make angled cuts up to get those pieces out. I've actually got to move this up because mine's a little bit shorter than I had anticipated. And I don't want to hit my jaw horse. So nice and tight in the clamp again. All right. So this time the saw is going to be angled this way. We're going to be cutting up to the bottom of the mushroom, working our way all the way around again.
All right, do you guys see that? Just kind of using this and sanding up. Working my way around, sanding it up. We got that nice round base. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit better here. All right, we got this mushroom starting. It's looking pretty good. Now, like I said, this is a quick carving. I mean, we're almost done. If you haven't been using a dime tip bar this far, it's time to grab our dime tip bar to do the rest. All right. So at this time, we got to make those little black marks that the Morel has, these little black lines. It's really easy. And this is why the dime tip bar is what you need because it's just the right size. And what you're going to do is come in it, not straight, you're not making straight cuts, okay? You need to come in at an angle. So you're angling the saw and you're just kissing it. Not, not you know, like doing fur on bears like I showed you before. This time, we're just gonna be touching it with the nose. So you're hitting it with the nose, hitting it with the nose, hitting it with the nose, and work your way around. And just go the same way, all the way around. And then we'll come back and do it again the other way. Because you don't want everything facing the same way. You want to mix it up so it looks a little more natural. So let me show you. All right, hope you guys caught that. As you can see, we worked our way around. Now it's time to go back. You'll see like voids where you didn't quite hit like right there. So now that's where you want to hit on your way back so you don't have like these empty spaces. Well guys, that's pretty much it. We're done carving. Now uh, you can clean yours up a little bit more if you want. I'm not, I'm not gonna for the sake of this video being a quick one. I'm gonna skip it. But, look at that. Huh? Not bad. You should be proud of yourself. It's a cool little piece. Cool little mushroom you got there. Let's get this thing done though. Next, we need our torch. Well, get her back in the vise. Let's bust our torch out. All right, guys, hopefully you can hear me good. Right now we want to just burn the crap out of the top. Try not to burn down here. Mostly just burn your top. It's got to be all black, so just burn it real good.
guys are still with me. This carving really isn't that complicated. Um, I did hit down here a little bit because I want a little bit of color contrast with the base, but we're not burning that black. Keeping it nice and just like a nice tan, okay? So right now is a good time to get that stiff bristle brush out. Let's brush the heck out of it. Now we burned, burned it a lot and burned it all black so that the inside of all your cut marks are a nice dark burn. Otherwise they won't get, they won't burn. Um, if you're using the one pound tank, you will find yourself taking a lot longer. As I'm trying to keep this video in real time, so you guys can see that this is just not a difficult carve and it doesn't take that long to do. So why are we brushing the heck out of it? I'm trying to get all that soot out. So when you go to put a clear coat on later, the, uh, the soot isn't being brushed all over the place and it'll just clear a lot nicer for you. It'll finish nicer. I won't be finishing it in this video though with clear coat. I'm just kind of going to get you guys to, you know, the product right before that. Putting your final finish on will be up to you. This summer though, when the weather breaks and I got nice weather, we'll get into uh, doing some finishes and things I use for out in the weather. So, all right, that's all brushed down. Now it's time to bust out your grinder or your flap disc sander, whichever one you got. Also, have your dust mask on at this time. I'm going to put mine on. Now we're just going around this lightly. We don't want to get all the dark spots out. That's it guys, we are done. You can slap some clear coat on that bad boy if you want. If not, that's it, you're done, easy. If you're using an angle grinder or something else, you know you can clean up this base more, you can sand it more, you could do whatever the heck you want else to it, but I mean, that's it. Simple, quick little carving, I mean, all in all, uh, I think they take me maybe five minutes to just rip them off and you know get them carved out. Make sure you guys are putting your initials in your carvings, all right? So you know the work is yours, your stake and claim to your art. Whether you think it's junk or not, it's important to, uh, to put your mark on it. Whether it's with a chainsaw or grinder or something, put your mark on it, though. Also, if you guys want to see some other great tutorials that maybe you've missed, go back through my video catalog on here on YouTube and check them out. If you want to help support this channel grow, check out my Patreon account. I'll have a link popping up, and if not, you can find it down in this description. Also, if you guys want to see my day-to-day -day projects I'm working on that don't make it here to YouTube, check out my Instagram account. I've got everything going on there. I try to post every day on there, whether it's a video or a project, but you guys can go there, be more connected to my work, and see what's going on. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.